When making chicken avocado wraps, these are perfect for any time of the day. The ranch sauce that goes with them is absolutely incredible and we're using it for both a sauce and a marinade. We'll start by making that ranch sauce, so add one whole egg to a tall jar or container along with 15 milliliters of white vinegar, 10 grams of American or yellow mustard, and 100 grams of any neutral flavored oil. Let's then get in there with an immersion blender and blend this up until it's nice and thick. This is a base mayonnaise, so now you can use this for really anything, adding all of your favorite ingredients in it to change it up how you like it. Now you can leave it in the jar and use the immersion blender again, or you can transfer it over to a clean bowl like what I'm doing here, but we're gonna add in 50 grams of sour cream, 125 milliliters of buttermilk, two and a half grams of both garlic and onion powder, one gram of both dried dill and dried parsley, two grams of dried chives and seasoning to taste, which is sea salt flakes and cracked black pepper. 15 cracks worth. Now, if you've put it in a bowl like what I've done here, just mix it around with a spatula or a whisk until smooth, or use the immersion blender again and blend this up until everything is evenly combined. Transfer it over to a clean jar or any clean container you have, or a squeezy bottle if you wanna make your life easier. We can then screw on the lid nice and tight, and this will last up to one week in the fridge, but we're going to be using this as a sauce and a marinade in this recipe. And this right here is the macros for each individual serving. With that out the way, you can use the same bowl and add 600 grams of boneless and skinless chicken thigh, along with four grams of both onion and garlic powder, four grams of smoked paprika, and 0.5 grams of red chili powder. Now what we're going to do is add in half of that ranch sauce, which is about half a cup's worth or 125 milliliters, then season to taste with sea salt flakes and cracked black pepper. Get in there and give this a really good mix around until everything is evenly combined, and that ranch sauce is going to be the perfect marinade, helping tenderize and make this extremely juicy. Transfer this over to a lined baking tray, then drizzle over one teaspoon of olive oil to help get this lubed up, which will make it cook a lot better. Mix it around quickly, then spread it out and make sure nothing is sitting on top of one another, just so that it cooks evenly. With that all done and you have something that looks like this, this can then be transferred over to a preheated oven that's at 190C or 375F and bake for 16 minutes. Okay, in the meantime, I've got a couple of optional things to do. This is 100 grams of mozzarella cheese that I'm just gonna grate up. Also, a quick tip is if you freeze it, it grates a lot better. The next ingredient isn't so optional, obviously, because it's in the title of the video. If you don't like avocado, of course, you don't have to use this, but we're going to pop this open, then use a blunt knife or a knife you don't really care about as much to remove the seed, and then use a spoon to scoop out the flesh, or you can peel away the skin yourself with your hands. It's up to you. With that done, let's then use a knife to cut this up into large chunks. You can also mash it, thinly slice it, do whatever you prefer, it's completely up to you. The last optional ingredient is seven and a half grams of flat leaf parsley that can be given a rough chop. You really don't have to use this at all. You can stop it for coriander if you prefer, or leave it out completely. Going back to the chicken that's been baking away for 16 minutes, this is absolutely perfectly cooked. It's so juicy and the smell is absolutely incredible. Allow it to rest for 10 minutes, which will allow the juices to redistribute, making sure the moisture level is perfect. Then slice, dice, or even leave it whole. It's completely up to you. Just keep in mind that you do have to wrap this. So if you do leave it whole, it will make it harder to do. I just like to cut it up like this. It's bite-sized pieces and it's a lot easier to eat. Now I'm using five burrito tortilla wraps for this recipe because they're a lot softer and I find they're a lot better as well. Place down the ranch sauce, just enough to make yourself happy then add over the chicken, remembering that we need to distribute all of these ingredients by five, making sure that each individual wrap has enough ingredients. Add on the avocado, the cheese, and I'm also using some pickled onions, which is a previous video. It is extremely informative, so I highly recommend you check that one out. And these add the most amazing texture and obviously a little bit of acidity. If you're using the parsley, add that over as well. Season to taste with salt and cracked black pepper, and then drizzle over the last little bit of ranch sauce. As for wrapping, fold in the sides and then fold the side closest to you over the top, tucking it all in underneath. Fold in the sides again, making sure nothing pops out and then just continue rolling until it's all locked in tightly. Everyone does this differently. If it works for you, it works for you. It might not work for somebody else, so it's not wrong or right. Just make sure it's wrapped up and nothing leaks out. Now we have an important life decision to make. You can either toast these or leave them plain. They're just as good as each other either way. But if you do it, place a non-stick pan over medium heat, add in one teaspoon of olive oil, then place the wraps in seam side down and toast for two minutes. With that done, flip these over and repeat the process three more times, ensuring that it's browned all over. And obviously doing it on the seam at the beginning is going to lock these in nice and tight. But once that's all done, just remove these from the stovetop. Like I said, you don't have to toast these at all, but it does add nice color, also a great texture as well, giving us that nice crunch. And it also seals that seam, ensuring nothing leaks out when storing. As for storing, I'm using food wrapper just to wrap these up tightly. You can also place them in airtight containers if you want, just do whatever is easiest for you. But once that's done, these will last up to four days in the fridge and up to three months in the freezer. 
As for serving, you can have these hot and cold, they're just as good as each other either way. Obviously, if you do heat them up, the cheese does melt a lot more, and I'll leave a lot of details about that in the description on how you can reheat these and a couple of different methods too. But with everything done, there's our absolutely incredible chicken avocado wraps, and here is all of the macros for everything together for each individual serving, and like always, we can then dig in. The only thing I can fault about this recipe is the fact that I didn't make more. It is absolutely perfect. The chicken literally melts in your mouth and has so much flavor. That ranch sauce is incredible too. Whether or not you use it in this recipe and use it as a dipping sauce for all of your favorite things, I highly recommend you make it. Obviously the pickled onions I put in it are completely optional as well. That's why I didn't show how to make them. They are a separate video, which I'll leave a link to in the description. But other than that, all of the nutrition values, obviously you've seen in the video, but they'll be in the description as well with all of the ingredients and recipe notes. If you wanted to change this up to like chicken breast or something like that. But other than that, that's all there is to it.